Hello and welcome to another how to video. My name is Ditech, CTO at DVS, and thank you to everybody that likes, comments, shares, and subscribes to our channel. And before you go any further, yep, I can just wait for you to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell button to be notified of our weekly content. I'm happy to wait, guys. It's important for us that you do subscribe. That does drive, believe it or not, like every other YouTube channel out there, that does drive the channel. So please, it doesn't cost you anything. While you're there, just hit that subscribe button. If we've ever helped you once, just hit that button once. So, what's today's product of the week? Um, I'm actually really excited about this. If you haven't spotted it already, it's this tiny little box by here, but all great things come in small packages. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to the brand new Hikevision eDVR. eDVR, what is that I hear you say? Well, let's explain and explore this a little bit more. This eDVR is a brand new technology from our premium partner Hikevision. Over the last couple of years, given feedback from us, installers and the marketplace, they've developed a new solution which is primarily aimed at the residential market, but it could be used anywhere. It's not solely for that market, but it does have a big benefit to that market. So eDVR, without further ado, let's take a look at what's in the box. So this brand new packaging in a very small profile gives away that it's the eDVR. It's a Turbo HD DVR. This particular one here, if I just do this, is an e IDS 7, it's this, like a 7204 effectively, four channel. It's an IDS EO4 HUHIB. I'm gonna hold it there, see if the camera can compensate for that. And okay. So basically, it's an ultra small, ultra cost effective, four channel HUHI DVR, so up to five megapixel turbo cameras. Uh, it's got the built-in analytics the, on the motion detection but it also has a built-in one terabyte SSD. So it's an all-in-one solution. There's no need to fit an external hard drive or to fit another internal hard drive into this unit. So inside the box, you get this lovely leaflet explaining Hike Pro Connect. If you haven't seen Hike Pro Connect, definitely go and check out that mechanism. It's very, very powerful and it adds a lot of value as you, the installer, to your end customer and the way you can share and interact with the product. So inside the box itself you get this super small lightweight turbo dvr four turbo bnc connectors on the back so up to five megapixel plus the analog so two megapixel five megapixel um doesn't i wouldn't put eight megapixel on here the frame rate's really low on the huhi eight megapixel frame rate as you know is very low it's like eight frames a second in my opinion it's just not worth it so two megapixel and five megapixel most of you guys are already in that five megapixel world anyway it's the best selling camera range by far and it's the most common one that you guys are now installing so on the back of the unit bring this a little bit closer so you've got your four bnc's it can also accept up to two ip cameras at the same time it's got the hdmi vga so it depends on which or how you want to connect that alarm input output so it's got four in one out uh your lan ethernet cable for height connect for adding it to height connect uh, if you want to add it to um, Hike Pro Connect, like we just mentioned, or again, if you want to stream two IP cameras, your 12 volt PSU input, which comes in the box, and we'll show you that in a minute, and then two USBs. Now, on the front of it, you can see there's three operational lights, very small, ultra lightweight. It does have two, so two basically hanging brackets two screws and hang it on that sort of retaining hooks there. It's very, very small. So if I get my iPhone 11 Pro, so this is an iPhone 11 Pro in comparison. You can see it's about the same length, a little bit wider than an iPhone 11, of course, wider, but it is so lightweight. In comparison, if I move this out the way, pull this forward, in comparison to a standard 7208 or 7204 shell, so this is a 7208, a 7204 is slightly smaller again. You can see how small that is in comparison. So very very 
uh, eco-friendly, so very low power consumption, which is one of the main drivers for this. So ultra low power consumption, which is great, especially for the residential consumer market where money is everything at the moment. It is, we all look at where we can save those pennies and pounds. This will help do that. It's got a silent running or near silent running fan. It doesn't have the hard drive in there, so you get less vibration and noise created by the hard drive. It has a solid state one terabyte um, SSD in there, which we'll open the unit up and we'll take a look at that just so you guys, you don't have to do that at home. It's already pre-installed, but we want to show you the inner workings of this unit. So it's got a low noise fan, low power consumption, low heat dissipation, low, um, like space saving design effectively. I couldn't think of the right word. And if I open this unit up with the retaining screws, I'm gonna lose them, I always do. Simply the cover comes off. You guys don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it to show you. I forgot about those screws last time. So the cover comes off. You can see here, actually inside the unit, two heat sinks, motherboard design. Again, very well designed, compact design, fan. But you can see inside the unit itself, I'm trying to see if we can see this. Uh, you can see underneath, just padded out so it doesn't make any connection with the back plate. But it's basically, an ESSD in there, uh, one terabyte built in. Now, if this goes faulty, they can replace this. They can take this and replace that one terabyte um, unit. So that is possible to do. You can see the one, uh, that's the IO board that simply plugs on there. But it's super small, super lightweight. There's, it's cool. This is literally the coolest thing ever. Um, what we are gonna do is, and like I said, it's fully compatible with Hike Connect, all of the other functions. You can connect the HDMI or VGA screen, you can connect the mouse to it, USB for export, all of the standard functions you would love to come and accept from a Hike Vision recorder. So we're gonna actually swap this IDS recorder here. So this eight channel recorder, which we've had here for about two years, is the uh, IDS 7208M2FA, the face recognition unit. We've done a video on this, if you're interested, it's on our channel, go search it, go check it out. We're actually gonna replace it. Now this is gonna look quite lost in there. Such a small unit taking up a little bit of this top big uh, gap effectively. But we are gonna put it on there, we are gonna web browse into it and I'll show you quickly what that looks like when we plugged it in. So I'm gonna put this unit back together. Say so there is very little uh, moving parts in here, it's all solid state technology. I'm super excited. So as it stands, they're not POC. I say it does come with a uh, 12 volt, one amp PSU, which you just plug in there to power it. So it comes with that PSU. They're not POC. So the POC cameras, if you are using POC cameras, they need to be powered separately. They're not going to be powered through this. Don't know if they'll ever make a POE, POE, POC version of this unit. I'd say probably not at this point, but who knows? That may change over time. And currently it's only a four channel unit. Again, being a residential aimed market, um, you know, they're normally one to four cameras and the same with small shops, uh, cost saving, one to four channels is generally enough. Uh, but who knows, they may make an eight channel version uh, in the near future and a HDHI version, who knows? So I'm gonna put this back together. We're gonna transfer you over then to the web browser and show you the setup, add it to the app and show you this sort of local GUI interface. So give me two minutes while I put all this back together and then we will hand you over. Okay, so as you saw, very quick and easy to swap over. Remove the old one, put the new unit in. It took a couple of minutes, did it on a time lapse. A um, bit of fun, really, just to show you swapping it over. Um, it does support a 2K HDMI, um, very simple. The screen supports that as well. And I have two 10 megapixel cameras and two of the 3K. So the 3K is effectively five megapixel. So if your question is, does it support the new 3K turbo cameras? The answer is yes, it does. Just make sure you go into the camera, set it as 3K and then uh, save it. And I'll show you how to do that for the on-screen display. If you have a 3K camera and you add it, most of the time it will add it as a 
2 megapixel or 4 megapixel light, you do have to change the resolution, which I will show you how to do that through the OSD menu call. So we have the unit in front of us. After I quickly transfer it over, I buzz through, set the IP address, added it to High Connect. These things take minutes, but it's stuff that you didn't really need to see for the video. You've seen it a million times on this channel. So I set the password. So the first thing I'm going to do is log into the unit to give you a look around. Very familiar setting. And as you can see there, never. You can see I've got four cameras added. So if I do press play, no, the stream is encrypted. If you do get this issue, it's very simple. Go to configuration, go to local, and then just over type the uh, height connect verification code. This normally happens if you change the default height connect verification code. You do generally have to then go into this parameter on the web browser, update it, save it, and it should work. So as we go into here, because I never use the default one, go into here. Put that as a four-way and press play. As you can see there, all of the cameras load. Oop. You can see uh, if I scroll through, well, I got one camera. And I think the DNC might be loose on that. I'll go and check on that in a minute. Yeah, that's loose. Give me two minutes. I'll go and sort that slight issue out. And then quickly on there. So nice and straightforward. Then, if I go into configuration, that's annoying. Okay, I just restarted my laptop and that seems to have fixed it. There's a bit of a weird fault there, but yep, yeah, it is fixed now. As you can see there, if I click on one, two megapixel, and then the five megapixel. So you can clearly see the difference there. So if I stop this, and I go into the configuration, we'll go through um, what this actually looks like from, from a configuration perspective. Very bog standard. If you use the Hype Visions web browser functionality, it's the same. You can see clearly the same structure. New device, same familiarity. So under local, that's where you put the new Hype Connect encryption key. It catches a lot of people out, but it's something that's really uh, beneficial to know and understand. We're going to put the rules and OSD enable because when we do set a smart event shortly, then we want to be able to see that on the web browser image to see when it's triggered. And the system, you've got the uh, model name there. And again, if you Google this, if you just Google this, and you can see here, this is the spec sheet, and you can see all of the stuff there. It also supports uh, AOC audio over coax, if you are using cameras of coax, built in SSD, full specification there. You can pause it anytime, very straightforward. So back to configuration. That's the current latest firmware. Again, like we always say, please make sure you are on the latest firmware. It fixes bugs, fixes issues. More importantly, gives you more functionality and stability than previous versions of firmware. So it's definitely worth doing and something you should be uh, very mindful of. Time settings, so we set the time, so it's 15 to a year in the UK. Uh, menu output, you can change menu to VJ or auto, depending if you've got HMI or VJ plugged in. And again, you can set the resolution of the screen output, the default 1080p, or you, if your screen supports it, higher resolution. Maintenance, reboot, update firmware, all of the usual stuff. Online upgrade, I, I, I unticked that. But when you check tick for upgrade, it generally doesn't find one anyway. I always untick it anyway. It, that option is only available in the web browser. No new version detected. Log and diagnose. So you can do USB diagnosis. Sometimes HQ asks us to do these things. Standard functionality. Security. Camera management. If you want to add two of the IP cameras in there. User management. So you can add users as always. And then tells you what's online. Network. So again, I've set the IP address. I know what this needs to be. Um, but again, you just either DHCP or configure it to your network configuration. DDNS, no one really uses that these days, but it's there if you need it. And then the default ports, change as required. And also same with a NAT. Advanced settings, so it supports email functionality. So the likes of Imix, Sentinel, etc. for that kind of integration. Or for just emailing you on an event. Platform access. 
So it's height connect or ice up. So again, if I want to use ice up, if I want to connect this to say hike central using the, that back end peer to peer connection, we now have the hike connect license add in function with hike central as well. But you can also use the ice up function. But again, hike connect, you can set that up during the initial uh, wizard on the uh, front screen. There is a wizard function that allows you to enable, add it, sort that out right from the offset. But again, if you don't want stream encryption, you can turn that off. Um, I would suggest leaving it on. It is a, a security function and it is a security device. But the choice is yours as always. Network service, again, HTTP. You've got all of the normal stuff, integration protocol, log service settings. Video and audio, like again, there's two two megapixel cameras, and then we got two of the 3K five megapixels. There we are, so it's reading that back from the camera, and these are recording at 12 frames a second. The two megapixel ones are recording at full frame, 25 frames a second. Okay, and they're on H.265 currently, but again, you can't change it to H.265 plus. I think you'd have to download the plugin and use Internet Explorer mode to change it to H.265 Plus for memory. It's not supported on the Edge version. Display info on stream, not supported. Channel zero, that's all of the cameras in a very low bandwidth. More for the app for a low bandwidth uploading off site. Uh, and Hike Connect, you can see all the cameras in a very low resolution, low bit rate. Image, so again, all of the st standard functionality. So you've got the brightness, contrast, etc. Oh, the web browser on a bit of a hissy fit. OSD, yeah. See, sometimes this is actually better. Whilst we're running an edge, it does have its quirk. Sometimes I just reload in into Next Explorer mode. There's a new plugin, download the plugin. So again, very simple way. If you do want to run it in Internet Explorer mode with the plugin, it is plugin less, but you do see sometimes, you see some of these weird glitches. It doesn't take long. Log back in. Sometimes it's easier just to run the plugin. Okay. Uh, image wait for the image to load again it takes a bit of time normally you have to close the web browser and reopen it and again you can change any of the cameras brightness contrast saturation just select it adjust it as required OSD settings very much the same uh, we need to change out the day month year on all of them but again put your own Camera names in there. I like to have mine in the corners. Daemon for you. We put ten AEP there. Just so we know really when we're making content. What is what? There's me on the PC eagerly working away. I say eagerly. Okay, perfect. And again, it supports privacy mask, custom text overlay, all of the standard high vision functionality that you guys have come to love. Um, event, I what I normally do, and this is only a personal preference, because it's got the built-in Smart Motion to analytics. You can use Smart Motion, so you can enable motion detection, and then you have it for human or vehicle false alarm analysis. Effectively, you can do that with motion detection, or you can do it with um, line crossing or intrusion. It really depends on what's best for your client and your. Um, application installation environment. Now, I tend to not use the motion, so I turn it off. So what I tend to do is put it on constant record because I don't like to miss anything. Pretty standard for most people. But again, you can put it on motion record or event record. But I've turned all of the motion record off on all of the cameras. Look, so that's all off. And I'm going to use the smart event uh, for the uh, alarm notification trigger effectively. And again, 
if you have got a camera like these, the 1080p cameras, I can actually enable motion detection so I can draw an area, let's just say. Well, it is a full screen as it is. And then I can use um, PIR. So this camera's got a PIR in there. So I can use a PIR and sensitivity. So the PIR and motion detection would have to go off to then enable the siren and the sound from the camera and then obviously the event notification. So you can still use those active deterrents, active deterrent turbo cameras as well. Or you can put it into AI mode and use the AI with human uh, and vehicle detection. But we're not going to use that on here. We're going to use uh, smart motion events. So video tampering. Again, you can enable that and set a sensitivity. Video loss. Handy if you've got good cabling and somebody cuts a cable in a vulnerable area and you want to know about it. Video loss may be handy. Alarm input. It's got four alarm inputs on there. So you can select your input, set, select your schedule, and then your linkage action there. Very straightforward. Alarm output, exception, so hard drive full error, break, breakdown, etc. Especially the SSD temperature and lifetime abnormal. Flashing light output and audible camera output. These are those Turbo Active X cameras um, with the flashing light and sound. So you can choose which camera. So it's only camera one and two. Schedule that the light up is scheduled, the, the light is active for, and then the audible alarm output on camera three has only got the siren on it. Uh, so you can adjust it on there as well. Pretty straightforward. So SMD, go back, we're going to do line crossing. You can do intrusion. Um, we do it on, on, on line crossing. So we're going to enable it. Detection is a human. Draw the area, and we're going to put the line across here. We're going to save it. Default sensitivity, I just leave as 50. But again, this is really down to the application that you're using. You can do whatever you want. But you, what you can't do, one handy tip, is you can't have this enabled on motion and line crossing and intrusion. If you try to, if you've got motion enabled, which it is by default, you can't then set these. You have to turn the motion detection off for this smart event uh, to be done. You can see it's already put a box around me, that green box. It's identified as a human there, and it will monitor me continually. Arm in schedule, so you can do vehicle as well if you're interested in that. Arm in schedule 24 7, but you set that as applicable when it's active for you and your customer. Linkage action, notify surveillance center, that's our app on our software. Again, you, can, you could have send alarm, audio alarm is the send email, so that'll send it to the email we talked about earlier. And again, audio alarm um, is the unit, I'll make a beeping noise. I am going to enable the beeping noise because I want that to, I want you to be able to hear that. And again, trigger the light um, and sound on the cameras if possible. And again, you could do that on different cameras. So on this camera, you could do intrusion. Again, human or vehicle. We're just going to do it on one camera, but again, it does support it on up to the four channels. Other events, we don't have, there's no IP cameras. So the IP cameras would allow you to select it and then have the events applicable to there. We have no IP cameras, so there's no other events applicable. Storage. Again, like I said, they're all set to constant record, um, but you can change that to any of these as required. Again, click advance. You can record audio. If there's AOC, like uh, audio over a camera with a built-in microphone, you can select record audio, and then pre-record, post-record, keep pictures for. So again, if I only put 10 days in there and save, that will only save that camera for 10 days if it's available to do that. Zero is indefinite until the hard drive is full. Storage management, you can see it's a one terabyte uh, SSD in there. And hard drive detection, you can do the evaluation on there should you feel you need to. Advanced settings, hard drive, and over, hard drive sleeping and overwriting. Vehicle detection, you can only do this if you add an IP AMPR camera. It would allow you to do the basic vehicle detection AMPR. We don't have that added. I have plenty of them fitted on the building. It's not really the market for this recorder. But again, if you wanted to, you could add an IP AMPR camera, which would allow you then to um, get the basic AMPR function. VCA, again, we don't have any of the uh, S, you know, cameras with the VCA on there. But again, if you do have the cameras, connected IP cameras, it would allow you to select them you know, from a drop-down box there and then select the functions that are available from those IP cameras. So it's a super powerful unit. It's really, really, you know, small, compact, quiet, fussless, space-saving, cost-saving. It's perfect for most jobs. It is more cost-effective to put this unit in 
in comparison to a, like a 7204 HUHIK one with a one terabyte DVR, there's also a cost saving in that aspect as well. But again, if we do put the cameras on a four way and put them up onto a four channel, so let's just focus on this one camera. So when I walk across this line there, that should go red to show you that the detection has occurred correctly. And then effectively, um, if I pull up my Height Connect app now, let me just get that ready. So that's the, just so you know there, that's the recorder added to Height Connect. So I'm not going to show you it, but you know, on the screen share, but that is that recorder there. So I'm just going to show you it. That line will go red and you should hear a beep and I should get a notification to my phone as well. And I can show you that event. So if I just walk across here, There you go, notification just worked. I don't know if you could hear that beeping noise. Maybe not, the microphone's quite far away. And again, there we are. So activation in both ways. The line crossing detection, as you can see there, that's the line crossing detection activation that just occurred, occurred, occurred um, from this unit and you've got live view and playback so you can see there the options for live view and playback so if i click live view it goes straight to the live view oh, yeah. and if i go to playback it'll go back to the playback of that event so it will play back um that event shortly you'll, you'll see me get up there you go i'm walking there now and ask the event where i triggered it if you know the Height Connect app, you know how powerful, how easy, and how stable that app is. This is a great unit. I'm really pleased. I'm going to come out with that, exit that. Really, really enthused that we've got this in our lineup now. Like I said, if you want any more details, drop us a line in the comments below. Get in contact with DVS on your usual contact at dvs.co.uk. Drop us an email. Drop us a phone call. Speak to your sales rep. Really excited. So a couple of things to note is we have ordered these units. They are due in in a couple of weeks, brand new to the market. I wanted to get this content out first to raise awareness so when they do land, you guys are prepped and ready to go. We hope you enjoyed the video. Another great um, uh, product available via our premium part of Hype Vision, like we said, and we're excited to bring this to you guys as a first. Other than that, take care and see you next week for another how-to video. Cheers, guys.